Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 2161. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah! Today I'm in beautiful Bowling Green, Kentucky, with a very special guest by the name of Mitch Wright. Mitch, welcome to Cars Yeah! Do you have any gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? Oh, we're ready to do a burnout, man. Now, before I give you a proper introduction, Mitch, what's one little thing that maybe people don't know about Mitch Wright? That I am, I get easily hooked on sitcoms. <laughs> really? So what's your favorite? Well, I've got a number. Ted Lasso is, is I'm waiting desperately uh, and patiently waiting for the final season. And then, uh, you know, big th- things like Big Bang Theory, The Office, those uh, satirical, witty sitcoms I really find enjoyable. Well, you know, they're good mind, uh, what I call mind relaxers, I guess, just to get you away from the everyday stuff. And you can just have a little bit of fun. And now there's so many options out there. You start getting into some of the streaming options on Netflix and Hulu and, I mean, all the others. It's kind of mind-bending compared to when you and I were little kids and we had, what, three channels, basically, to deal with. Exactly. And, uh, you know, I honestly don't watch that much television, but I do make a point. If I find something like that I like, I'll sit. And if it's a streaming service, I'll binge watch it. Yeah, I understand. I do the same. I still watch the old Seinfeld shows just because I think the writing was pretty clever and all of that. Exactly. Yeah. Well, let me give you a proper introduction. Mitch Wright is the owner of Motorsports Consultants, a company he started back in 1994. He'll say he's retired, but I'm not so sure about that. He's worked with and for some great racetracks, including Pittsburgh International Raceway, Miller Motorsport Park. I've run there. That's a cool place. And Enola Motorsport Park, just to name a few. His career spans decades in the motorsports world. Back in the mid-70s when he raced and earned six SCCA club racing championships, Mitch owned and ran a MotorWorks import auto repair, but racing has always been his passion. Having raced with the Huffaker Racing, he ran in the IMSA Renault Cup Championship, Martin Racing and the IMSA Firebird, Baker Racing SCCA Escort Series, Corvette Team and Manufacturers Championship, Meekum Racing, man, you've raced with everybody, IMSA Grand Sport Camaro Team and Manufacturers Championship, the Archer Brothers Racing, Dodge and Eagle Talon, Trans Am World Challenges, the list just goes on and on and on. We'll be back in just a moment, but first a word from our valued sponsors. They keep the gas in the tanks here and we'll be right back buckle up covercraft has the most complete line of custom seat covers available choose between the poly cotton seat savers endura precision fit custom seat covers leatherette precision fit custom seat covers and their durable carhartt seat covers they're all easy to install and remove and guess what they're machine washable too easy cleanup to make them look brand new no more worries about the kids spilling on your seats or your pets damaging your expensive upholstery or leather covercraft's quality seat covers protect from damaging pet claws pet fur hair mud moisture food drink spills drool from permanently damaging your vehicle's fine surfaces headrest and armrest covers and color options are also available on many of the styles and i've got a great offer for you if you use the code yeah 21 y-e-a-h 21 at covercraft.com they'll give you 10 percent off plus free shipping that's right 10 percent off and free shipping with the code yeah 21 at checkout covercraft protecting the things that move you visit covercraft.com today american collectors insurance is my go-to for classic car insurance But did you know they also insure your valuable collections of automobilia and other collectibles? If you're like me, you've invested in a lot of cool collectibles over the years. Those items are valuable. And if you were to lose them in a theft or a fire, well, try to get your normal homeowner's insurance to pay you what they're worth. Good luck with that. American Collectors Insurance provides you with assurance 
and confidence that your collectibles are fully covered. They insure a lot of items, including automobilia, wine, baseball cards, books, figurines, die-cast models, model trains, glassware, sports memorabilia, toys, and a whole lot more. American Collectors Insurance, they've been protecting us enthusiasts since 1976. They provide you with an agreed value insurance policy backed by a long history of taking care of their clients. Give them a call today for your personal agreed value quote at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866-224-9324. Tell them you're a friend of mine, Mark Greens here at Cars Yeah. American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. Automotive enthusiasts just like you and me. That's American Collectors Insurance. Jim Canova is a past guest here on Cars Yeah, and he's detailed over 8,000 vehicles. And that kind of professional experience leads to innovation. He was tired of uncomfortable stools and creepers and being down on his knees when detailing cars. So as a result, Jim thought, you know what, there must be a better way. And he invented the Bumby Seat. His unique design gets you off your knees and your bum onto a far more comfortable seating position for all your low-level automotive detailing. The Bumby seat with its patented full flat design allows you to adjust your position to the task at hand. Convenient side trays hold your car care products, tools, cloths, or a tasty beverage. Built for the toughest driveways and garage tasks, the Bumby seat has wheels that roll easily over almost any surface and it makes a great around-the-home adjustable stool for hobbies, yard work, or take it to the car show. The full flat design makes storage a breeze. Jim has launched an Indiegogo fundraiser and you can get in on the start of what's sure to be an industry favorite. Go to Indiegogo.com and type in Bumby Seat, that's B-U-M-B-E-E Seat, to be one of the first in line to start improving your automotive detailing experience today. That's Bumby Seat on the Indiegogo.com website. A fun folding mobile seat design. So, Mitch, we are back. So I want to go back in time just a little bit. This racing background you've had, and oh my goodness, you figured out a way. It seems like you've raced with everybody. How did this all start? Well, I actually started I, from as, as far back as I can remember. I was fascinated with cars and motorcycles and basically anything with an engine. Talk my folks into letting me buy a go-kart i had to do it with my own money so with my paper route money i, I bought go -kart, started racing go-karts from there did motorcycles for a while and found out i wasn't that good on motorcycles i kept getting myself hurt yeah that happens yeah and i i didn't i probably didn't start out young enough but anyway i i transitioned to cars and realized right away that you know it's expensive you know as i moved up through the ranks and and wanted to continue racing i had to find other ways to do it other than pay for it myself well you had a, a business i mentioned the uh, motorsports consultants business and we're going to talk about that because that seems to be a business that has run through your entire career but you also had motorworks import auto repair i'm assuming those businesses help supplement your racing habit right <laughs> Yeah, it kind of worked both ways. Uh, I was pretty young when we started. I had a business partner when we started MotorWorks, and that was in San Ramon, California. You know, being young and stubborn and all, I probably should have asked more questions. And, you know, I, I really, my focus was racing. It wasn't really the business. So, you know, ultimately, I, I left the business and my, my partner continued on. I mean, it was one of those things. I had to make a choice on, on what I wanted to do. And again, I was pretty young. I was still in my 20s. When you think about all the different teams you ran with, because I rattled off a whole bunch of different teams. Was there one series? I mean, you talk about SCCA and IMSA. And was there one series that really you felt like when you got there, like, wow, I've, I've kind of made it now. This is pretty cool. Well, I think both. Well, I think anything that I could get paid to drive, I was, I was doing fine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. But my goal all along was the Trans Am series. And, and, I, and I was able to get there, you know, Thanks to the Archer brothers and, and Chrysler, we, we were a Dodge team. And I was there for a couple of years and Chrysler pulled the plug and unfortunately did it pretty late. So it kind of left me high and dry, you know, looking for a ride. And at that point, I actually 
opened up another race shop down in Minneapolis and I was living in Minnesota at the time and did that for a couple of years and picked up rides here and there and did a little short track racing and you know whatever I could but yeah I mean it's a tough business it w- it was really fun being part of the circus I enjoyed it and I'm thankful for everybody that you know, I was able to, you know, the various different teammates I had, I had some great teammates and, and the various different car owners. And uh, I was just really fortunate. And I kind of the right place, right time. You know, it's a whole different, different animal now than what it was back in the uh, 80s and 90s. Well, it sounds like you made a go of it and you did it. And that's the most important thing. And yeah, things have certainly changed now. I've had many, I say modern day racers on, on the show here. And it's a whole different world now, especially the money side of it, which is a massive part of racing always has been. But the other business that you got involved in, and I want to talk more about that because that's really what brought you here to Cars Yeah today uh, through some past guests, which we'll talk about in a moment, is your consulting, motorsports consultants. You've worked with some major tracks. What are what is that business all about? Well, I'm, I've actually, when I was with SECA, Sports Car Club of America, for 10 years. I basically got a phone call. I was on my way out to California, got a phone call from, from the SECA office, and they offered me a job. And as a technical manager, you know, they figure, well, you know, might as well hire a cheater to catch a cheater type thing. <laughs> The old days of racing, eh? Maybe the current yeah. days, who knows? I mean, some of the stuff that's going on right now in the racing world uh, still still could be a little dicey out there. Yeah. So anyway, um, you, know, you know, the race team's job is to find all the gray areas. And But anyway, you know, I wasn't, I've always been, always been on the competitor side and on, and my wife and I talked about it and we went and visited Colorado and fell in love with the place and. So I ended up going to work for him, stayed for 10 years, went from a technical manager to vice president of professional racing uh, in that 10 years. But, you know, a ton of travel and, you know, constantly in battling with manufacturers and race teams and all that. And I, I just kind of burned out. And fortunately, the opportunity came along to get into track management. And, uh, you know, thanks to Alan Wilson, who was a track designer, who's uh, not doing a whole lot anymore. He's getting up there. But and then Larry Miller, who uh, who funded the uh, Utah uh, project, you know, again, I, fortunate, right place, right time. And I, uh, the beauty of and the timing of, of getting into track management was I also was involved in all the construction of these various different facilities. So. You know, learned an absolute ton. I know more about asphalt than, you know, I ever thought. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's like anything. You dip your toe in and pretty soon you're up to your waist or your neck, I guess, in alligators. And uh, it sounds like that's kind of what happened. But but that's part of what drove you here because I had Sam Rabinowitz and his wife, Jude, have both been guests on the show here. And they had this little project called Driven. And they said, you know, Mitch is a guy you should talk to. What's your relationship with them? Are you helping them out with their grand scheme of uh, EV racing, racetracks? Yeah, I'm I'm actually a minority partner on the performance side of the fledgling business. It's a startup and you know, Driven's interesting. I I met Sam at a at a Holly E V event at Sears Point and I was running the track portion, the the track day portion of the event for Holly. We've just become friends from there and uh, interesting guy. His his business is interesting. Driven, you know, basically started out um, providing training for Tesla owners. You know, he said after you know he, uh, Jude, Jude had bought a car and they got 15 minutes of training and then you know exploring what the car is capable of and what it you know how many different you know for example 500 modes. Oh my I, god! I know I, it's crazy. Had a clue. There there are 500 different things that that computer will do. So. You know, so he started offering training, and it's and it's unique. It's a it's an Uber like platform, and they've got associates and trainers all over the place, and and you know they'll come to your house and train. So anyway, he did the driving portion, had such a good time, and so we're looking at adding that element um, to their portfolio. Yeah, it's fascinating. I had Arabian Prince, another guy that he met that is involved in the uh, Driven Performance DAO, and you're right. involved. And I mean, I, I said to Sam, I go, aren't you busy enough being a doctor? 
I mean, <laughs> holy cow, dude. Uh, this guy has one of those, uh, you know, I, I'd say a, an Elon Musk, Steve Jobs brain. I mean, he looks at something and goes, okay, how can we do this better? But I love the way this came out of necessity with his wife thinking, oh, this will be fun and EV and then going, whoa. This stuff is way too technical, way too ominous. I don't know about this. And now they're making it easy for people. So I think it's tremendous. And and when they bring somebody like you involved with track experience and their big grand scheme of, you know, building EV racetrack and racing, I mean, holy cow. But that's what the great thing is about the world and people and ideas is bringing together experts and, and making it all happen. And when you think back into your life, Mitch, your racing life, your career, and all these different facets of what your life has become, have you had a driving inspiration in your life, someone who's been a very key, influential, inspirational mentor type person? Oh, of course. Uh, th- there's a number of them, actually. I, I, I really can't. There's not just one, you know, different life there were different people you know obviously my my father and, and my folks were never into motorsports i just i found it and latched on to it at a very early age you know just uh, the support i got from my folks the encouragement my dad's a very hands-on mechanical guy and so i picked up that from him and uh obviously a very ethical guy as well so uh, i learned a lot there and then you know, meeting folks like Alan Wilson, Larry Miller, Wendell Strode, who was the, the last executive director that I worked under, all those folks were great influences and, and really amazing people. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the racing world is full of some incredible, insightful people that uh, can just do anything. And I, I was talking with a guest, I think last week, where they were talking about racers and that whole group of folks. And he said, you know, when it comes to the COVID challenge, I don't want to be stuck with a bunch of racers because they just figure out how to make things happen versus what happened with COVID where it was do this, do that, do this. I mean, everybody didn't know what to do from one day to the next. and uh, But racers just kind of get it done because they have to, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you get put into situations where you have to make snap decisions and you know, look at the micro and look at the macro all at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. When we come back, I want to talk to you about maybe one a challenge you face in your career. You're a racer. So the challenge question is kind of a silly thing to ask a racer because the whole career is about challenge. But keep that in mind. Keep the seatbelts tight and we'll be right back. You listeners know I've been into car care my entire life. I am so excited to team up with AutoGeek in 2022. AutoGeek.net has been a leading source of auto detailing products, accessories, and expert knowledge for more than 20 years. What started in 1997 as a mail order catalog company has grown into a multi-website based e-commerce store that they are today. With a large online presence on its own website featuring close to 100 different brands, AutoGeek has grown to be the largest car care retailer in the country. AutoGeek's wholesale program serves accounts in over 30 countries and its retail sector ships worldwide. Go to AutoGeek.net for the best product selection on the internet today and their stellar technical support. AutoGeek.net. It's where I go for all my detailing needs. That's AutoGeek.net. I've discovered Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual informed, reasoned opinion based on firsthand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions. Ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey and be sure to use the code cars. Yeah. When you subscribe and they'll give you $10 off. Boom. Linkage geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at linkagemag.com. mag.com 2050 or a hundred years from now, will there be a workforce to care for the collector vehicles we love? With auto shop programs disappearing across the country, it's a question we enthusiasts have to ask. That's why I support the RPM Foundation, which exists to ensure that the critical skills necessary to preserve and restore these vehicles aren't lost to time. One of the many ways RPM, which is short for Restoration 
preservation, and mentorship is accomplishing this goal is through workforce development initiatives. The RPM Apprenticeship Program enables the next generation of artisans to earn a living while they learn the craft of restoring and preserving these vehicles directly from industry professionals. The Endangered Skills Program documents the process of masters training future craftspeople on a variety of critical skills in danger of being lost forever. For more information on how the RPM Foundation is driving the future of the collector vehicle skills trade, visit RPM Foundation today. They're one of the charities of choice here on Cars Yeah. So Mitch, uh, let's talk about this challenge question. Again, I said pretty silly for a racer because the whole career path is just fraught with challenges. You talked about some in trying to get into different race series and finding rides and so forth. But can you talk about maybe one in particular that was a real big challenge? But more importantly, what did that challenge teach you? So you could take that lesson forward in a very positive way. Probably pretty common. I started out SCCA club racing like most racers of my generation did. And basically it was the only place to go. If there, there was no such thing as track days and all at that time. If you wanted to get on a racetrack, you had to go racing. Up and down the West Coast, we won a lot of races, set a lot of lap records. So we set our sights on going back to the runoffs. And this was all coming out of my pocket. And I'm in my early 20s at this point. And go to the runoffs, you know, spend the week back there, get home and realized I had spent more than my gross income that particular season. Oh, okay. Ouch. Oh, I'm I'm scratching my head figuring out, okay, how am I going to pay for this now? Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. And, uh, you know, decided it's, I can't, I can't afford to do this. And at least not where I'm at right now. And that lasted about six months. And, and, and at that point, somebody said, Hey, I need you to help set up my car and, you know, drive a few races in it and, you know, as payment and that sort of thing. And that kind of turned on the light bulb and said, you know, if I hustle around and work with people and, you know, maybe I can just, because I had to drive, I had to race. It was, it, I just had to. And so that was the way that I can continue. Because I had for, it was six months and obviously it was basically during the off season, but I, I quit. You know, I came back from the runoffs and I'm looking at all these bills thinking, oh God, this is, I'm crazy. This is nuts. <laughs> yeah, I can't, yeah, I got to find another path here. Yeah, exactly. So that was, you know, that was kind of the turning point thinking, okay, I got to figure out a way that at least be able to make some money or or not have to spend any money to do this and that was a huge challenge and again fortunately at that point in time for a lot of guys you know with the various different showroom stock type series there was a ton of manufacturer involvement you know coming coming around with the you know a little bit later in the early 80s with the escort series and firehawk series and renault cup and all these things were coming about that it made it a lot easier for guys like myself to, to get a bunch of press and, and to meet people like John Dinkle, who at the time was the editor of Road and Track, and Joe Roos, who was a motorsports editor, and Peter Egan, and and uh, a number of different journalists, and, and you know, kind of befriend these guys and get advice and, and um, introductions and things like that. So... A lot of it is is right place, right time, and 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 not giving up really. You know, I I gave up for six months and decided, I, you know, I I I gotta I gotta get back on the racetrack. Yeah, well, you dropped some wonderful golden nuggets there, and of course, my listeners know this. I've interviewed hundred racers. The not giving up comment is the prevalent statement. You just don't. You find a way. But uh, what I heard from you is you just started reaching out, meeting more contacts, using those contacts, not using them in a bad way, but you know what I mean. Uh, bouncing off each one and figuring out a way to do it. And no matter what your career, that's just what you have to do sometimes, and it's not always easy. Uh, we don't all have a big checkbook behind us many times to support this stuff. So you just figure out a way. But the key thing is you just kept doing it. And that's what I heard. And it's like that. Yeah. You know, I'm still doing it to this day. I do some camp car races and I do driver coaching. And, and like I'm working with Driven on the, uh, on, on the high performance project. And so I'm, I'm staying involved. I, I love this stuff. You know, I'm, I'm such an addict. My, I told my wife a number of years ago. I think it was before I left SCCA. I said, you know, maybe I need to look for something else to do. I was, 
you know, a little bit down and she just kind of looked at me and laughed and said, what the hell are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to do what you love. Well, that's what, yeah, why, exactly. why this whole car chat thing started for me is, is uh, introducing and inspiring people to people. So they become inspired by your stories and uh, that you can do it. There's a way to do it. So bravo to you. Hats off to you. I like to ask about a special vehicle in your life. This could be a road car or in your case could be that one special race car you got in that you just went, wow, this is cool. What is that special vehicle for you? Oh, God, there's <laughs> so many. That, that's that's really a hard question, you know, because I kind of separate my road cars and the various different race cars I've driven. I've enjoyed every race car I, I ever drove. Um, some are obviously better than others. I, I think the – and each one gave a, you know, a, a thrill. But the Trans Am car – being that that was my goal early on and you know, when I started, basically even before I started, I, the Trans Am series was uh, something I aspired to. Mm. Getting into that car for the first time and, and even just doing the test day was, you know, if if I didn't do anything else, but at least I got to drive it was something special. You know, driving a 2,500-pound car with, you know, not quite 700 horsepower and not a lot of aero and tire and uh, it was awesome <laughs> what what was that car it was a dodge daytona it was a silhouette it was a, a riley chassis well that car was uh, a copy of a protofab chassis but the cars we raced later were riley chassis cars so i'm gonna be your car psychologist here maybe something nobody's ever asked you before i'm kind of guessing i'm gonna crawl into your head a little bit here this is where we kind of figure out how you perceive yourself if you were reincarnated pun intended as a vehicle could be a race car street car some people have been motorcycles. I've even had a few airplanes on the show. Uh, what would you be, but more importantly, why? I would be an Alfa Romeo Giulietta Veloci. Okay. Well, see, this is why this question takes me places I would have never guessed. So I have to ask why. Well, I had a Giulietta Spider as my second car when I was in high school. I happened upon it and bought it for $800. And I love that car. And I've had five Alphas since. I, I just, the the cars have a ton of personality. They surprise you. And, uh, but the personality part of it is what I love about them. They may not be the fastest things out there, but, uh, you know, they, they turn heads and get people's attention and they just make you feel good when you drive it. Yeah. I especially love the old Alphas from the fifties and sixties, mostly the fifties though. There were some Alphas that even the 40s that were just insane. I mean, just beautiful cars that unless you go to some major Concours event, you would never know they ever even existed. Yeah, I bought mine was a 60 Julietta Spider, which now in the shape that it was in then, if it was still in that shape now, would be anywhere from an 85000 to a plus thousand dollar car. And I love that thing. You know, you'd get insulted every now and then. People would ask, is that a Carmen Ghia? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, a lot of people haven't seen those, you know, they just, they're, you just, they're not a lot of them around, but uh, there's so many people that just love alphas for the same reasons you mentioned. They just have a character and a feel and a look and uh, yeah, they're marvelous, awesome cars. How about a great book that you could share with us today that you've really enjoyed? I've thought about that a little bit. I, I read quite a bit, mostly mystery, murder mysteries. I mean, right now I'm kind of hooked on a bunch of the Reacher novels i oh, didn't realize yeah. there's like 19 of those things I but know. two that kind of hit home and they're obviously motorsports related uh, to me are um last open road by burt levy oh, and, yeah. and garth stein's you know art of racing in the rain uh, there's a lot in those books that um you know i can relate to personally yeah they're both awesome i've had burt on the show several times garth's been on the show as well and uh the whole series that Bird has done, oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, that guy is just a writer extraordinaire. I mean, he's yep. incredible stuff. And then he came out with that audio version, The Last Open Road, which is just marvelous. And he, I, I was very honored. He asked me to be one of the voices in that. I had a very bit part, but still, I'm in there. So that's kind of fun. I always tell people, if you can find me, let me know. But uh, actually, I played two voices, so that was kind of a fun thing, but uh, all great books for sure. So I'm going to enable you to go on the ultimate drive. I'm the guy you've been looking for your whole career. I'm going to open a big checkbook, one of those golfer's checks that are giant, you know, that people hold with lots of zeros. doesn't matter what it costs. I'm going to buy you any car in the world. 
You can take it and drive it anywhere you'd like. And here's the key. You can be with anybody, even somebody from the past who's no longer with us, that would make that ultimate drive very interesting. So what does the ultimate drive look like for you? And if you want to go on a racetrack and just be in the ultimate car driving on the ultimate track, you can do that too. Well, you know, that's that's a tough, tough question. I, I think I would love to have a, be in a GT3 car at Daytona for the 24. And if you do the 24, you might as well do Sebring. But with Mark Donahue and David Hobbs. Mm-hmm. Two, yeah. David Hobbs, who's just a personality and funny and obviously very quick. And Mark Donahue, just because he's always been a hero of mine. That would be really cool. Yeah, David's been a guest here on the show. Uh, he is a character. What a fun guy. Uh, I, of course, ne- I've never had Mark on the show, but I had his son on the show uh, a couple months ago when he was getting ready to go back up to run Pikes Peak in a Porsche. Um, and he shared some wonderful history and stories about his dad. But yeah, I mean, just iconic. I, that sounds like I, I, I get it with you. Having learned more about you now. Yeah, GT3 car Daytona with those characters. That would be pretty darn cool. Mitch, you've taken us on a wonderful trip today. And I, I'm really grateful that Sam suggested that we talk. I mean, if you guys listening missed my talk with Sam about Driven uh, or his wife, Jude, you can go back and find them on the Cars Yeah show notes page. And Arabian Prince, who's involved with them as well. He's a very interesting guy. They suggested him and I said, a rapper on Cars Yeah? I don't get it, but listen to the show, you'll understand. How would you leave us with some parting words of inspiration or advice today? Well, I think like in anything, you know, I've I've been fortunate to have been able to get uh, meet a lot of people and get some really good advice and it took me a little while to become smart enough to listen and dissect that advice from a lot of different folks but you know kind of in my younger days I I was one of these guys that was probably a little bit arrogant cocky and with the school of hard knocks learned a few things that said you know there's there's a lot of people out there that know a hell of a lot more than I do and uh, and was was able to surround myself with some folks that are a, a lot smarter than I am, and, and B, have a lot more experience, and that it, that paid dividends. You know, I've heard this over and over again, and it goes back to what our moms all taught us, pick your friends wisely. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> hang out with losers, you become a loser. Always pick a friend that knows more and is smarter than you, because you'll uh, aspire to be like that person. Works works the same in uh, spouses. I did that with my wife. I would yeah, say me. she's w- way smarter than me, so... Yeah, mine too. <laughs> there you go. So we both have learned some things in our youth. Well, you've taken us on a wonderful ride, and I really, really appreciate it. Are there ways people can still reach out to you today? I know you've kind of joked about being kind of retired, and then I said, well, I don't think a guy like you ever really retires, and you laughed at that. Uh, do you have a website for motorsports consultants? I do not, but I can be reached through Driven, and their web website, driven.com, and that's D-R-I- V-Y-N. BYN, yes, exactly. And, you know, I can be found there. And I really don't participate that much in social media at all. And I've, I'm happy with where I'm at right now. <laughs> yeah, you're doing what you want to do. And that's that's the secret sauce of life, doing what you want to do. So I'll make sure to link to Driven. And again, if you listeners missed my talk with Sam or Arabian or Sam's wife, Jude, uh, you'll find them all on the Cars Yeah website. Mitch, hey, thanks for being so generous with your time and your expertise and sharing what a wonderful life you've built for yourself. And you continue to have fun out there in the garage on the track and helping other people. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, Really appreciate it. It's been fun. And, uh, you know, we endured a bit of a challenge together. (laughs) We did. You know, you're a very patient guy. And I'll tell the listeners again, I mentioned it. We had a lot of technical difficulties connecting and it was all on my end, had to do with some software upgrades and things. But, uh, you know, uh, Mitch stuck with me. We pulled it into the pits. We rebuilt the engine and here we are going around the track having fun. So, yeah, you know, when you're marching through hell, just keep on marching. And as the racers say, Never, ever give up, right? That's right. All right. I appreciate that. This has been fun. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up 
a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!